The NBA world received the incredibly sad news that Willis Reed, the New York Knicks legend, died at the age of 80 on March 21st. This is such a loss to the NBA community because he was truly one of the greatest players in league history. To me, he's undoubtedly one of the 50 greatest players of all time. His resume speaks volumes. He's a two-time champion, a two-time finals MVP. He won the MVP in the 1969-70 season. He reached the finals three times. He's a seven-time All-Star, and he has five All-NBA appearances. Now, there's one other tie that we should give him that you won't find on his basketball reference page, but it's something that all of his contemporaries have said about him. He is one of the greatest leaders the league has ever seen. In this new age of the NBA, there are a great number of players who don't feel the need or see the importance of taking the role of the leader of a team seriously. I just want to play basketball is a commonly heard phrase. However, Willis Reed did not share that same sentiment one bit during his 10-year career with the New York Knicks. He was dubbed with the nickname The Captain by his own teammates, and he did not take that title lightly. If that meant dominating a brawl by beating up four players by himself, then that's what he was willing to do to defend his teammates. But there's something else that he was willing to do. He was always willing to do less to help his team win a championship. From the various books and documentaries that have come out about the 1970 New York Knicks, it has been well documented what their head coach, Red Holzman's philosophy was. He cared about how the players made each other better, and he wanted them to make whatever sacrifice was necessary to help the team win. He didn't care about individual accolades, and he didn't want any of his players to care about that either. Willis Reed's job was to be the defensive anchor for this team, and that's what he primarily focused on. He was capable of averaging more points, but that wasn't what the team needed from him. He did less to accomplish more team success. However, he was more than just a rim protector and the enforcer for this legendary team. He had remarkable mobility that allowed him to get the rebound and push the ball down court in a hurry to initiate the offense. It was very similar to what Bill Russell did for the Boston Celtics. As far as his scoring ability, he was a master with the ball within 20 feet. He was deceptively quick, and he could move the ball with ease to get his way around the basket. But for the various knee problems that he suffered later in his career, Willis was able to run the floor exceptionally well. He also developed a reliable outside shot that helped spread the floor for the next high power offense. And according to many of his former teammates, he was the heart and soul of the Knicks. Although they had many great pieces, the reality is that this team was only going to go as far as Willis Reed was capable of taking them. They needed a dominant big man that could compete with all the other talented centers if they wanted a true shot at competing for a title. Let's use their 1970 title season as an example. There was Will Chamberlain, who had just joined a super team out in Los Angeles. They had to worry about Lou Alcender, aka Kareem, who immediately turned the Milwaukee Bucks into title contenders. And then they had to worry about Wes Unseld, the reigning MVP of the league. How was he going to respond? Check out what he did against the Baltimore Bullets in the semifinals. With the series tied at two apiece, he went for the crazy stat line of 36 points and 36 rebounds in a 21 point victory. In the following series against Kareem and the Milwaukee Bucks, he averaged an impressive 27.8 points per game on 54% shooting. 12.2 rebounds per game, and 3 assists per game. His offensive numbers were great, but the value that he brought on defense was the biggest factor in that series. His intimidating inside presence deterred a lot of the players from attacking the basket. He was also able to use his strength to his advantage against Kareem. He was lauded by the media for the way he forced Kareem away from the hoop and out of his preferred spots. His savviness was just as important as his toughness. Then in the finals against Wilt Chamberlain and the Lakers, he was able to outperform the legend. For the first four games of that series, he was averaging 31 points on 49% shooting, 15 rebounds, and 3.8 assists. In this case, he was asked to do more, and he proved that he was capable of answering the challenge. But then in game five, he tore a thigh muscle so bad that he could barely jump or even move. The MVP of the league, was done for the series. But that doesn't mean that he was done impacting his team. It all came down to Game 7 
and he decided to make the gutsiest move that we've ever seen. It was reported that before the game, he took a bunch of painkillers, and then he did this. He walked off the tunnel, and his mere presence completely shifted the momentum to the Knicks. Walt Frazier might have been the real hero of the game, but he said this about the impact that Willis Reed caused on the game, quote, I know if Willis didn't do what he did, I wouldn't have been able to have the game I had. He got the fans involved and gave us a confidence just by coming out onto the floor, end of quote. How could a team not have this rush of adrenaline when their captain makes one of the first baskets of the game and electrifies the crowd? Then a few plays later, he makes another shot. The momentum was all on the Knicks side for the rest of the game, and that drove them to their first championship in franchise history. That game was the essence of Willis Reed. He was all about putting his teammates in the best position to succeed. That's what made him such an important piece of this historic team. Was he a statistically dominant player that could control the movement of a game like Bill Russell or Oscar Robertson? No, that wasn't him. In all honesty, he was a benefactor of an extremely deep team that worked and improvised together so smoothly. However, it was his leadership that put this team over the top. And in that game against the Lakers, the man was obviously in pain. He could barely lift his feet up when he was moving around. But he felt the need to go out there on that faithful day to uplift his team. It wasn't enough for him to support them on the sideline. He had to be there on the battlefield with them. And his presence alone broke the Lakers spirit while inspiring his team to play their game. Now that is the mark of a true leader. And it's something that we're gonna miss dearly.